This episode of Capes and Lunatics is brought to you by Tweaked Audio. Get awesome headphones, go to tweakedaudio.com and use the coupon code SOUND. Sent off free shipping and a lifetime warranty. Or you can get there through the link on our website, southgatemediagroup.com. There's a thin line between heroism and madness. Here, the line fades to nothing at all. This is a world of capes and lunatics. And nothing is off limits. <laughs> Hello, everyone. It's a Friday night. Craziness ensues. Little hellfires on the rampage. Daylight savings time is her weakness. <laughs> anyway, Capes and Lunatics, episode 130, starts right now. Hello and welcome back to the Capes and Lunatics. I am Phil, and joining me, as always, as I said, that rampaging darkness in Florida. Hey, y'all. Uh, and the stash, well, who knows how long the stash will last, but the stash from New Jersey. Kelly, the professor of What? Should that music be any louder? That was like the loudest I've ever heard that music. It's usually just a gentleman of like, hey, here's intro music. And I was like, oh, it's like Monday Night Football in here, Philip. Ah, uh, I had to switch back. I'm sorry, I had to switch back to my old setting because if we record like Rob Southgate wants us to record, then we could record on all all our ends. But if I take the headphones out of my mixer, I can't hear the sound effects or the music. So, okay. Well, that's why you edit in post, Philip. <sighs> I would deprive the YouTube uh, viewers. How dare you? You're saying the YouTube is YouTube. It's live and it's messy. I, Podcast I, is for the polished product. I, You're saying that that's how you differentiate your brand. I like the live reactions. Dong is a medical term. Fight me, nerds. He, you yeah. know, what it is, he likes it, you know, because he does have a full-time job. How he does everything he does with a full-time job because I can barely not have a full-time job and do what I do. So it's like, you know, Phil is... I offer to edit. Now, if he takes over the boys, I can edit capes and give, you know... I know, I know. I, I, I just, I would like to hear, I, I would like to hear the stuff and be able to do... Oh, Rob can <laughs> down with me eventually, but... That's you all know what you need to do, Philip. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you right... I'm sorry, you, I said Rob, Master Doom, Master Doom. You need to do what Tristan does, which is he has one ear with one headphone and the other ear with another headphone. Because he, Tristan is the king of multitasking, so he like I have to yell at him all the time. And <laughs> right now he's with my Bluetooth, so he's like he's got like he's got one thing set to one thing, another thing set to another thing. It's like a little little. Yeah, yeah that's the thing. Unless I'm plugged into the mixer, I can't hear any you know any music. Yeah, well you got you need to get like another headphone, like a little earbud. Hook that into the one line, and then hook the other line into the thing you want to want to record. So that's how you do it, Philip. So you got to you got to multitask. You got to be you got to be like a zenial, be not DJ like an old so millennial. You got to be a zenial like Tristan, who is just totally looping you guys. I st- I just want to be a, a master cigar roller like Maz Manzor. Hmm. Does he roll his own cigar? He was taking a way. lesson with somebody on Facebook the other day. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, he's a guy he likes to, you know, he lives his life to the fullest. He, he does. Deny, you know, well, that's, that's what not having kids can give you. It's like, oh, I'm going to learn new and interesting skills. And, you know. He never forgets the little people. Wow, 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 wow. I, I did that reference. Thank you. Thank you, Steve Rogers. All right, so hey, Lilith, good news. I have a bunch of uh, Marvel news. So, hooray! Well, no, did you did you see who they picked to be the lead writer on she the the She Hulk series coming? No. The, the plus, it's uh, not if it's not burn. I don't care. Well, no, it's it's Jessica Gao G A O. Who I oh, guess? Oh, yeah, I know yeah, her. She's done so. Didn't she? Ask, didn't she do some writing for Rick and Morty? Ooh, that, that's not what I know her from. But oh. Yeah. 
Well, that's the article I saw. They're like, oh, yeah, she wrote for Rick and Morty. That, that's not saying much because the season she came in is the weakest season. Well, they Fight said she, me, Rick and Morty nerds. Again, I haven't watched it, but supposedly she's the mastermind behind Pickle Rick. Oh. That's, 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 I'm not even going to get into Pickle Rick about people who enjoy Pickle Rick. <laughs> <laughs> not going to get into it. Uh, okay. But yeah, they picked her as lead uh, writer on She Hulk, so. Well, maybe she, you know, I'm sure she has a good. Look, if you're going to. Well, now, did she write Pickle Rick or did Pickle Rick just happen during her watch? I thought it said she created the concept or something. I don't know. Well, you know what? Somebody get Dan Harmon on the phone. <laughs> you know what? I don't know how much apple juice flows in the Rick and Morty writer's room. Um. <laughs> It's, it's not apple juice. It's um, yeah, it it's a fluffy white powder that's not meant for babies' butts. I think. Little, yeah. little hellfire knockout cheese. So I don't know if they're eating a lot of a lot of powdered donuts or if they're drinking apple juice, but whatever oh, they're doing. Babies, babies, they're, they're... they're eating what? But yeah, I'm, I'm guessing they dropped all this news because Disney Disney Plus is coming on Tuesday. Come on, get your Founders Edition before it's too late. Come on, guys, pre-order. Oh, I'm signing up this weekend. Yeah. Probably tomorrow. I am unemployed. I can't sign up. I know. I have a job. Well, there's no uh, well, Marvel. The Marvel, the new Marvel stuff's not coming right away. I think the only what what did we say last week? I think the only right. stuff coming the Mandalorian and then that live. I'm not going to watch it, but that live action. Uh, Lady and the Tramp. I, well, first of all, I really want to see live action Lady and the Tramp. But I do want to say my biggest theme with them is every time I look, it says, yes, uh, Disney Plus will be an add on onto your Hulu, your Hulu subscription. Mm-hmm. So add in Disney Plus. You get, you know, if you have Hulu, you can add on Disney Plus. I am waiting for that because I have Hulu. And I'd like, okay, well, let me just add it. That's let why me- you should just get HBO. Uh, go now, and then you'll get the HBO Max for free for the first year. Well, yeah, that's what I was going to say. I'm just saying. I'm just well, 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 I think they said. Oh, well, well, yeah, they, they said it. HBO go. So. Well, don't well, you have, you'll get it for free. I was going to say, yeah, yeah, they said for like a year, yeah, you're going to get HBO Max. Uh, was it HBO Max? Well, is it yeah. HBO now or HBO Go? It's I think, HBO Go. I think HBO as long now as you, something some, different. I think as long as you're paying yeah. for some kind of HBO, isn't it? You're going to get HBO Max free for a year. It's specifically oh, HBO cool. Go. Okay, yeah. So HBO Go, uh, you get because you have that if you have HBO. Yeah. Exactly. And I have HBO because I have yeah. TV, which is going up next month. They told me today from like twenty five dollars to forty five dollars, so they ain't losing money on the gig. And uh-huh. that, and I don't have Verizon, but I thought I heard somewhere I thought Verizon was giving some of their customers yeah. Disney Plus yep. free for Verizon. Yep. So the mouse is flirting. The mouse is flirting with Verizon. Which is honestly the people you want to flirt with in this situation. Um, oh yeah, you want to wine and dine in Disney, yeah. No, no, no. no Disney no. wants to wine and dine Verizon so they can, you know, match Warner with the AT and T. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were like, because they everyone they have the they have the content. Because they can't buy Apple yet. Yeah. Well, no one wants Apple. Uh, I'm sorry. No Apple one, Plus so is man. like the most. That's like that's like one of those. TV systems they had that came with your game console. I'm just uh, talking about the company, not Apple TV in general. Okay, uh, Apple TV Plus. I'm like, like the most exciting thing I heard is that one of their science shows will have music. Um, so it's like, oh, well, that's like the most interesting. No, Jason like, Momoa's show is the most interesting thing about it, uh, about Apple Plus. <laughs> okay. I don't know. Um, <laughs> the Lil's, Lil's going right for that trident. Yeah, well, I don't know. Didn't Lil say that even Jason Momoa didn't save... Um, Ooh! Jason Momoa didn't save, uh, what do you call it? Um, Aquaman? Yeah. Well, I, I wanted Aquaman, not Jason Momoa being Jason Momoa in CGI water. Yeah, Biker Man. Yeah, I didn't... Yeah, well, there you go. I mean, honestly, you know, they never well, should have let I Aquaman go the beer. That's without, the the shirt up, with, without the sound on, you know? Um, he's got, he had a really good show that was on, I want to say it was either Amazon Prime or Netflix, uh, Redemption or something like that. That was like three seasons long. I mean, he can, he can do certain things. It's just, that's not who I wanted for Aquaman, because I, I knew what it was going to be. Fair enough. True. Uh, Hashtag right. Jake Abel was robbed. Anyway. 
Uh, oh, and then they also announced that Jeremy Slater, the series creator of Umbrella Academy, is going to be the showrunner on Moon Knight. That should be fun. That's going to be a wild time, kids. <laughs> oh, yeah. to be a fly on that writer's room's wall. I'll, that's all I'll say. I have no one for that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Netflix yeah. better watch its back. Yeah. Well, you know, not for nothing, Netflix is, is doing their due diligence. Has anyone here seen Daybreak? No, I keep hearing okay things about it. Uh, it is it is adequately okay. Um, it is a, it is not something that you want to necessarily watch right off the bat, but it's something that if you are willing to sit through an episode, you go, oh wow, this next got really interesting. It's very weirdly fourth wall breakly. Breaky to the point where it's like, oh, they were all dead the whole time. Kind of like, yeah, that was kind of obvious. Uh, as a as a fan theory is totally baked in, but it builds well. And where you think the natural end point would be is like, nope, there's six more episodes left. And then they end it on a note that makes you go, oh, wow, that is like a weird place to end because it at once ties up the loose ends, but also kind of um, leaves the entire possibilities of what happens next completely open. So it is, I highly recommend Daybreak. I mean, you know, it's kind of like a, a Future Man, where the first couple of episodes of Future Man, they're kind of hard to get through. But once you like get invested in the mythos, Daybreak really delivers. You know, and that, to me, that's my biggest complaint about Apple Plus, is like nothing that I'm hearing about from Apple Plus sounds like anything other than I'd see on literally any other channel, whether it's Netflix or Wii or anything. It's just like, oh, here is a show with Jennifer Aniston, some other actress. Yeah, that's the, that's the problem. Yeah, Apple. It seems like they only have like five shows. It's like everybody else has. Yeah, you know, I mean, look at Disney Plus. I mean, they're going to have probably the cheapest price. The most content, but I mean, everyone else, Netflix. They're going to get you hooked and then they're going to jump up that price. Oh, so no, no, no. high! No, it's going to be like, it's going to be like DirecTV now, where it's going to be 45 bucks eventually. You know, it's like, yeah, you know, but they're going to give you a lot of content. That's the thing. Like, run out. Yeah, but I mean, I mean, you jump it up too high, people are going to be jumping ship too. And again, Lilf, even if you, people are only paying like seven bucks a month, that's all like the, eight different services. You got Prime, you got Hulu, you got you yeah. Know. Yeah, I mean, you have to compete with the other platforms. And two, all that, all that, all those Marvel series that are coming, the Mandalorian, those are just like hour long commercials for all the movies. Yeah. Well, or, which well, is that why is, like eight hundred twenty dollars. To be honest. Hello, hello. Philip, you are making the big assumption that Disney's still in the movie business. Oh, they're still in the movie business. You don't think they're going to make any more Marvel movies or or uh, Star Wars movies, Charlie? Yes, sir. They're, they're, they're they in the movie them. business. Oh, yeah. We don't want to make any more billion dollar movies. Uh, if you make a trillion dollar TV show, why would you make a billion dollar movie? What's going to be a trillion dollar TV show? Anything could be a trillion dollar TV show because you get the trillion dollars on the T-shirt sales roll. Um. No, it's an interesting. Uh, and yeah, comment. but yeah, but if you have, if you have the means, which they do, why not both? The uh, TV because, show and the Billy they Call don't too. get they don't get as much from showing a theater production as they do from showing a Disney. Yeah, yeah but basically, all. a Disney Plus is purely vertically integrated. Yeah, Every nickel is there. Yeah, but you 70s child. I mean, even those movies have lives afterwards on streaming and Blu-ray, and you know which they can then set. It's like they can still do that with Disney Plus. They can move the the point of first contact from the theater, and they can still put out road shows, which is what actually people thought would save the theaters back in the sixties. Well, do these big road show, big musical numbers, and everyone will come and show up, and they'll dress nicely and eat fine food, which sometimes people do at these movies now, you know. And what you're getting language the kids use these days. They're getting into this idea maybe that the movie theater is dying and will only exist as your Alamo Draft House kind of style fair where you're going for a night of all the more reason to be boycotting the mouse, but whatever. Well, it's not like Warner when when Skynet happens and it's Disney that's Skynet. I don't say I didn't try to tell you guys. 
Don't say that. Lil didn't assimil- try to warn you. We will come and assimilate you, Lil Velvar. Oh, Lil. Oh, oh. Try, try. No, Lil will be. See, Lil would like Daybreak, I think. Um, although it's like about kids that are like Xennials, so she might not enjoy it as much. But it's like, yeah, that's the world I was meant to be born into. Um, not really. These kids, she and says, water- no thank you. A world with no human beings and dogs. That's her. That's the world she's meant to be born into. Just a cabin well, in the woods. Yeah, well, you know. We'll get her. Uh, but just plus, like I said, you know, it's, it's not for me. The Mandalorian's literally the, oh, well, Moon Knight. Okay. Two, yeah. two shows. I'm in. You know, you know, you know what? I, I'd have to, I'd have to see how our first season goes. Like, it, it could go terribly right or terribly wrong. It just depends. Same with things. It, it could be up. Inhumans. Is all that I'm saying. Yeah. How um, dare you? Oh, uh, it's a tricky you know, character. It's a tricky not for nothing. Character. Did you, did you see the pictures from uh, Eternals? From the, yeah. Uh, also known as Inhumans Two, bigger budget Boogaloo. Um. At least Who's they got that people guy. That's what? Because they, they, they have three people in the picture. You have Tina, who we know. They have a woman in green who is obviously Cersei. But then there's a guy in purple. I don't know if that's supposed to be Makari. If that's supposed to be um... no, no, they no Makari. There, they actually have a woman playing Makari. Oh, okay. So... Yeah, I thought Makari was red, but this guy's purple. I was actually looking. There is, uh, oh man, who was it? Was it Acor or Acor? I don't know. I looked it up earlier today, but it's already left my brain. But yeah. So honestly, it doesn't give me a lot of faith. The the, the, the image that was leaked, which is why honestly, I think it having... was. It, it, yeah, I thought it was going to be Icarus or whatever. Oh oh, Icarus. Yeah, that might have been more. Yeah. Or it could be Star Fox for all we know. I don't know. Or is it like one of those deviants, you know, or, or is there like a purple one? Yeah, his name is Thanos. They already used him. No, nah, well, I thought there was another one that was like. I thought it started there, there's a guy who is red who is a deviant. Uh, uh, Jurek? Are you Eternal. thinking of Jurek? I forget his name. I only remember him because he was in the Evolutionary Wars and had a whole thing with uh, the Super Scroll, Super Elf. Scroll. No, that was a different thing. Because Bro? <laughs> like, I'm trying to no, think. Here. Only no. one no. Um no, but he's 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 the big red Thanos looking eternal, but he's like he's got a gigantic head. He almost got like a Tyrannosaurus Rex head. But he is a technically an eternal. Isn't that Unimind? I'm sorry, what? That's what they all combine Unimind. Oh, okay, then I don't know. That's the only brain dude I know. <laughs> No, no, no. He's, not, he's got a giant head. Oh, head. 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 Okay, head. He's got a giant head, and he looks kind of like a Tyrannosaurus Rex, but he's a... No, head. Didn't you hear what he said? <laughs> yeah. Never anyway, was. yeah. So I don't know who the purple guy is supposed to be, but... I mean, you know, it just... It looked very... It looked very not impressive. But then again, Doctor Strange didn't look impressive in the in the stills that got released of that. Yeah, and I wasn't thrilled when I heard about the first Guardians of the Galaxy movie either, so. Yeah, so it could be great. It could be fantastic. It still wasn't that great, but whatever. Uh, It was better than I thought it was going to be. Guardians of the Galaxy is a nearly perfect movie. Ooh! Oh my god. I don't know what you're I mean, I don't know what you're movie. I don't. Okay, you know, whatever. Whatever, you know, I guess... Boy, I guess you are drinking you know, that mouse Kool-Aid hard. Oh, he told you to talk to the hand. No, man. No. I'm just wow. saying. Guardians of the Galaxy, you've got, you know, ragtag. I mean, yeah, it's formulaic as all heck. I'm not going to deny that. But, you know, the reason why you have formulas is because they work. You know, it's like if the formulas didn't work, it wouldn't... You wouldn't have formulas. These are it's a formulated yeah. film that delivers really well. Where they balance humor and danger and fear and loathing and everything. It's just really nice. Honestly, I will say this. I will say this. The original Guardians of the Galaxy, better than Endgame. And anything else I darn well please. Yeah, Lilith. Uh, 
Um, I didn't think end game was that great, so I mean, maybe. <laughs> oh, but, but the big. But I like that game. I like end game, but I feel that that one, that was that was a very that end game was a was a cherry for the fans. Speaking end of game, yeah, okay, yes. I mean, no, I was gonna say end game's the one they're putting up for all the Oscar nominations. Oh, and Captain Marvel just for the one. Oh yeah, but uh, like I think most of they're pinning most of their Oscar hopes on Endgame. Well, I mean, I think that's fair, and I mean, honestly, maybe some visual stuff. But oh like, uh, no, they they got art. They're putting up Robert Downey Jr. Yeah, I, I saw I, that, and I'm just like, don't bring Robert Downey Jr. into this. He could care well, less about an Oscar. No, 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 no. Well, first of all, yeah, Robert Downey Jr. won an Oscar. Don't act like he didn't want an Oscar. And quite frankly, I think the reason that he didn't want them to put him for this for the Oscar is because he didn't want the embarrassment of not winning it, but then when there was so much demand for it, and not for nothing, the Academy, the Academy probably asked him, please, please, we're begging you, we need a film someone watched to be in <laughs> running. We just, just, please, just, please, don't give us, we, I know you're going to get the technical awards, that's fine, we just need something. We don't want to give you adapted screenplay, because this is not really an adapted screenplay. Please give us. They wanted Robert. The, the Academy wanted Robert Downey Jr. as a sacrifice. Um, They're like, and after please, did, Robert Downey Jr. Let us give you an award. Yes. We, we don't want to go to Chris Pratt. Please. Yes, please, Robert Downey Jr. You're our only hope. Um, <laughs> the Academy needs this. They need a film someone saw. It's too little, too late, and nobody watches the Oscars anymore. They need to look. It's all. It's hit. all. About about the other award shows at this point, so I don't know if the ratings fan that out. Well, this way they they, they, they want to get back in the game, Lil. They want to look relevant. Too yeah. late. You, the damage is done. Too late. You know what? You know what? They want to look relevant. They put up. They nominate Endgame for a bunch of stuff. Oh uh, well, they, it's too late to nominate Joker this year, right? Uh, no, you could nominate Joker for yeah, this I year. I think it's literally up and. So like what after Thanksgiving or something like that? Uh, no, Joker could be up. Honestly, I'm surprised okay. he isn't pushing Joaquin for that. I mean, so, honestly, so Joaquin, saying, yeah, yeah, Joaquin versus Robert Downey Jr. Joaquin honestly, that is down. that I, is. I hate a Joker. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? I, I think Joaquin wins that hands down though. So I don't well, know. I don't know. You know what? I think. Oh man, I, honestly. I, Here's what I'm gonna say. Whatever happens, it, it's like any. It's like it's like all professional sports. The people who are who 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 own the teams don't care who wins. They just want the fight. So yeah, I, I think that a, a Joaquin versus Robert Downey Jr. battle is exactly what Oscar wants. It's I mean, I I think Robert Downey Jr. was like just a little bit better. And two, Joaquin did that role in one movie. Robert Downey Jr.'s play Tony Stark in how many movies? Yeah. And also you have the entire oeuvre of Robert Downey Jr. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, and, that, and that's like, and, and although I think Robert Downey Jr. has won an Oscar. Hasn't he? I feel like no. I, thought he, I think he was less... nominated. I was going to say, he's a When least... you're an winner, they have to literally say that in every every piece of press you're in. Oh, yeah. No, that no, is... literally, it's a rule. That's... Even if you're nominated, Oscar nominated, Oscar winner, Tony yeah. winner, whatever. Like it, once you do that, you're li- they have to. It's like a rule. Okay. So yeah. So I think that honestly, the goodwill that Robert Downey Jr. has and the bad will that um, Joaquin Phoenix has, yeah, it gets to be a real fight. Honestly, um, as to who did the better performance, I mean, they're two completely different performances. I don't know how you would even compare them. But you know, I think you know the idea of I think what you can certainly say is that Tony Stark is a much more believable and relatable character than in any way that um, Arthur. Um, oh, he's got a BAFTA uh, award and a Golden Globe. That's wait, the closest yeah, he has. He has two Academy Awards. Okay. 1993 for Chaplin and 2009 for Tropic Thunder. Oh, he was great in Tropic Thunder. That was for Best Supporting. Yeah. 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 So, he was. He no, two. I'm sorry. You can. You can. No, but it's not for the big prize, though. Uh, no, no, no. That's not for. Be- that's not for. His best uh, actor for Chaplin. Yeah, his best actor for Chaplin. I knew he won Academy Awards. 
Yeah, it's honestly it'll be his third. He's but he's honestly he's Robert Downey Jr. He's very good at what he does. You know, um, <laughs> he's the Wolverine of acting. Um, <laughs> right down to the uh, excessive uh, chemical abuse at various points in his life. Oh jeez, and the loss of large se- segments of his past. Um, he's not going to argue if he was on the show. He'd say, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure. That's why I don't do that anymore because that really hurts you. Oh, wait a minute. What? Or was he just nominated? Did you read it wrong, Philip? Yeah, he w- yes, he was That's nominated. What That's what I thought. That's what I thought. All right, get the clean drop. Lilith Hellfire was right. <laughs> I'm going to get that on a t-shirt for Christmas, Philip. Did he get anything for Chaplin? I thought he maybe got... Um... Because I know he, like, he was very involved. With no, he was nominated for best, you know, for best, act, you know, best actor, but I guess he didn't. Okay, so there we go. So, there we go, yeah. So he hasn't won yet. So, But then again, that goodwill of several, several Oscar nominations comes back and you go, okay, well, maybe this guy gets Gets the final, gets the final cut. You know, that. I don't really care. This is rich white people problems. I literally don't care. <laughs> uh, hey, should we talk some comics? Sure. Why sure. not? Bill's Comics Corner. Or no. All right. Someone throw something out. Uh, I wasn't that excited this week, to be honest, except for Legion of Superheroes. Oh, did... and, and New Mutants. That's about it. Oh. Uh, well, I didn't read New Mutants. What did you think? Uh, better than expected. The artwork was fantastic. Story, of course, because it's the number one's all set up and things seem kind of weird and out of place, but it's to be expected in this New Mutant universe that we're, that's coalescing. So I'm trying to give it three issues. <laughs> well, speaking of that, did you read X-Force number one that also came out this week? I, did, I didn't get a chance to, but it's, it's in the pile. Okay, because I was going to say, your girl, Jean Grey's in it. Yeah, no, I just haven't had the chance. And I Dom- had a lot of uh, indie books to read. Yeah. So. And, and Domino. Oh, yay! I totally forgot about that. And, of course, Wolverine, because he has to be in every X book. I was going to say, that's not a surprise. <laughs> that's utterly unshocking. But, yeah, I mean, I mean, it, I mean, it sounds about the same as New Mutants. I mean, the art was great. Again, it's number one. It's all set up, and... It, it looks like, per, spoilers, it looks like Professor X gets shot in the head at the end of the issue. You can only hope. Uh-huh. Uh, Fingers like, crossed. Fingers crossed it sticks this time. Yeah. Don't worry, it only hit a very small part of your brain, which is only useful if you believe in psychic powers. <laughs> <laughs> Watch, now he'll, you know, he probably got regrown by Krakoa. He'll be like, they thought my brain yeah, I, was in my head. It's going to be something stupid like that. It's a cookbook, Philip. It's a cookbook. <laughs> hey, <laughs> I want to give a special thought out, a shout out to it. Came out on Wednesday this week, more a comic, uh, which opens up. First off, no log story this week, which is like shocking. But this I really loved. It's a funny thing happened on the way to Frankenstein's Island. Um, which Tristan loves. Anytime I get a book that Tristan loves, I have to give it a shout out. And it's a it's a it's a guy Jude story where we have essentially Najira, who is our big lizard monster that nobody likes, fighting uh Frank Congor. Frank Congor. This is Frankenstein's Island, he's the giant Frankenstein ape monster that is our defender and our protector. And, you know, a lot of battle, a lot of gaiju stuff. Uh, saves a lady on an island where, as luck would have it, uh, Najira was. And but a giant plant monster. They kind of had to team up a bit. But then, you know, not so much. And then uh, Kong leaves the uh, uh, Najira to fight the plant monster with the lady. The lady's got something weird on her face. Uh oh. You heard Tristan. She was actually the plant monster the whole time. Um, and Tristan said, which made me proud as a dad, I love the field of old comics. So, yes. right there, 
It came out on a Wednesday, alternate comic. If you're not reading it came out on a Wednesday, what is wrong with you? It's only a buck ninety nine. Uh what next is book fun you'll have all week. So number nine, number nine. Uh we are adding to our pull list, or at least to our pickup list, a oh, this is a good one too. This was just weird. Uh and see they shall have like a weird World War II steampunky story hmm. where you pick up that like there's they're actually fighting this crazy thing called a queen eye that is literally just a freaking eye that wants to give you tea that they shoot and then one of the one of the soldiers starts eating the jelly from the eye and it's like ooh crazy so there's there's something wrong with that story I don't know what but yeah I, I just love this book this you know this if you like anthologies, you should be reading it. Came out on a Wednesday. It came out on a Wednesday, number nine from Alternative Comics. Really, a really fun book. So, hey, Lil, if you said you did read Legion of Superheroes number one, I did. Yeah. It was better than I was expecting. Yeah, I mean, I mean it was fun. It was again, actually it's fun. a first issue. It's kind of set up. Yeah, it was fun though. It was a you know, it was a fun bend this thing. Um. Like that artwork kind of threw me off. I was really surprised that they they grabbed Ryan Sook. I thought they were gonna like get somebody a little different, but you know. I like the art. It's a it's it's a young look for sure. Mhm. It's, it's, it's definitely a different art style than um I was expecting for Legion of Superheroes. I was definitely thinking it was gonna have like more of a throwback feel, but it feels fresh, which is a good step for business. And what did you think about the artifact that people were chasing after? Uh. People were trying to steal Aquaman's trident in the third. Exactly. I was like, okay, sure. Whatever. Speaking of artifacts, Philip, did you get any interesting artifacts when you picked up that book this week? Why, yes, I did, Charlie Esser. I got a Legion of Superheroes flight rank. Well, for me and my son and my wife. Oh, wow. Yay, now the four of us have rings. I. Why? You have one too? Yeah. I have, like, uh, five of them. He was just, like, take the whole bucket. I was like, okay. <laughs> uh, I just got one for me and Luke and Danielle, but uh, yeah. there was there was one platinum, but I guess I don't know how he picked who, what guy was getting that. I don't know if the guy was paying him or what, but I guess for what? Probably. Uh, I think it was, like, every 200 copies the store bought, they got, what, like, a platinum one. Yeah. Okay, so, Philip, did anyone of interest like the fact that you got a Legion of Superhero thing for you and your son? Oh, yes. I put it on Twitter and uh, the tweets. Uh, please go like our, the tweet on the Capes and Lunatics Twitter because last I looked, it was like at 198 likes. So let's push that over 200. Yeah. But uh, yes, I it was it was liked and then retweeted by uh, Mr. Uh, Bendis, Bendis, Bendis. Himself. So close to getting that white whale. We're going to get him on here. Be nice when he comes. Yeah, I'm little. always nice to the guests. You never know in any of the interviews. There's this one and you won't say who. You never, you never guess. Totally professional. Yeah. Just like if we ever got Alan Moore. Just like maybe. if we ever got Alan Moore, Charlie. No, he couldn't. He couldn't help himself. So. <laughs> well, I would be. I would like, be the, I'm going like, to challenge you to a duel, sir. No, I would Stop actually face for the glove. <laughs> about you know, the Mexican mystery. How he has changed the world through his art, you know. He sticks to his guns, man. You look at the credits on Watchmen when it, every Sunday, his name is not on that thing. Yeah, at all. Disavowed, homie. Mm -hmm. Disavowed. Doesn't mean he doesn't watch it. All you see, all you see is uh, yeah, grit. He doesn't want to stay on any of He tells him he's like. He don't cast the checks. He's like, don't put my name on it, because all you see is it says based on a series co-created by Dave Gibbons, the you know the artist. Oh, that's fine. You know, um, Gibbons is like, I'll cast that check. <laughs> yeah, well, hey, man, you know, that eat. Why not? First off, there's no way for us to know that he's not casting those checks. His wife, his ex-wife's cashing that check. <laughs> well, yeah. There you go. So that's the name he made put it in. He's like, yeah, just send it to her. You know what? Maybe he, maybe he's just that petty that he's like, yeah, don't pay me so I don't have to give it to my ex-wife. <laughs> I mean, that, I mean, who knows what it is. I, I actually have respect for Alan Moore. You know, he sold his soul to the devil, but that doesn't mean I disrespect him. <laughs> um, I don't make mistakes. You all do. And, you know, I, I actually have a lot of respect for Dr. Faustus. He's the guy that, you know, started the whole trend. 
You know, you sell your soul to the devil, you get your greatest dream, but it's not quite what you thought it was going to be. Because you, often your dream is not what it's gonna, what you thought it was going to be. But that's, I, that's your show business, man. I know. But no, like, speaking of Bendis, like, you know, people, you know, you guys claim I bash him. But, like, yeah, I, li- I like Legion of Superheroes. I thought it was fun. And I've been having fun with uh, Batman Universe. I mean, number five was out. It's reprinting at the the uh, the Walmart stuff. You know, Ben, this was right in that Batman story, Charlie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's good. I mean, there was time travel last issue with Green Lantern, and then like, I mean, it's basically Batman chasing down Vandal Savage. You know, for this artifact, Nightwing shows up in this issue. She knew I'd like that. No, no amnesia or nothing. So that was good. But no, they show what was in the egg. They were all chasing after. It was like a white lantern ring. And so, oh no! They're uh, bringing Kyle back. No, Batman puts on the White Lantern ring and the and all the Green Lanterns like come to arrest him. Oh, nice. Yeah. Why are White Lantern rings against the law now? I don't know. I didn't think so, but they're like, oh, that's like a it's like an uncontrollable like illegal power, and <laughs> Batman's basically like, I can't take it off. <laughs> yeah, and not for nothing, it's like I don't know. Of course, that Batman should have all the rings, and I think he's had all the rings at one point or another. A yellow, a le- yellow ring came for him. I know that. I know, well, obviously. It's like, hey, it, you he have to coordinate. You know, and he certainly has willpower. Definitely not without rage, and not for nothing, a little bit of avarice. Yeah, and they they set it aside. There was an Elseworlds where he got the Green Lantern ring. So yeah, yeah. he's ha- he's had a Green Lantern ring too. Yeah. Well, you know, they've given Batman all the powers over the years. You know. And well, he, you middle. know, Batman is, you know, king. And if you're gonna hit the king, you better kill the king. That's right. What you think you are, creator of Black Lightning? <laughs> oh, I know. Dad, yeah, you hear about that, Charlie? Uh, Tony Isabella, who created Black Lightning, was saying, "What do you, what do you say, little Batman's toxic?" Yeah, I mean, I kind of, like the way he said it. It was just like, "Ooh, sour grapes, sour grapes," kind of. But like, he had a point. I don't want to work in comics. Point, no. like his delivery was off. It's first off, first off, even like Frank was it Frank Miller would probably be the first one to say, Yeah, he's a very toxic person. No. It's sort of like Ellen yeah. Moore when he talks about Rorschach, it's like you're not supposed to like this guy. Yeah, but Frank Miller says it ironically, like, Oh, look how grim and gritty I can make Batman, isn't he? Yeah, so I was gonna say, douchebag, yeah. well, yeah, but does it doesn't it doesn't separate it from the reality that. He's kind of a toxic person. He's kind of filled with a lot of hate and rage, which is why, honestly, I would love to see the Red Lantern ring find Batman. Because, I, oh, man. Red Lantern ring, Batman who laughs, make it happen. Batman who laughs is already OP as hell, which brings me to one of my favorite books this week. Um, the one with uh, Shazam. Big surprise. The infected King Shazam number one. The plot is kind of paper thin, but I kind of just like seeing Billy like with a bad streak and he's like punching through people and they gave Mary a really good subplot in there, which like it, never happens. Shazam <laughs> is, is punching through people? Well, he's infected with the, you know, it's it's that, that spinoff from the year of the villain. Yeah, oh. and, and it's it's coming out of Batman Superman too. Yeah, yeah uh, Batman who laughs is infected. Uh, Shazam, Commissioner. It's the Fort new Man. Secret it's, Sinister Six. And they're like, he, he, there's a couple more he's infected, but they haven't revealed who yet. Yeah, it's gonna be six of them, Abby. So like sure. Batman and Superman, we're trying to track them all down. Okay, so it's it, it's all leading up to yet another villain. Uh, event when uh, oh. like, like Lex Luthor and uh, Batman Who Laughs are going to war against each other. Well, yeah, so obviously, obviously, just like Solomon Grundy is going to be the new uh, Lord of the Green, um, obviously Black Ant- Adam gets his redemption arc when he smacks the butt out of Shazam. He was like, look, I may be evil, but you're just crazy. It's going to be it's going to be the whole Joker Red Skull thing again where it's like, you know, I may be a sociopathic murderer but I'm not a but at least I'm a patriot. You know, it's going to be like I may be all these things and then you're going to have your Black Adam redemption arc just before we get a nice little Black Adam film with a uh, gentleman by the name of uh the Dwayne Johnson. Dwayne Johnson. Don't call me the rock, Dwayne Johnson. Dwayne 
so yeah, so that's my pred- prediction for there because you can because as, a, as a, I don't know how you have a corrupted Shazam because his entire point is he is not to be corrupted. That's why you have Billy Patson because he's a good good person. But they, they played with it in a couple other things, and I mean it's very far and few between what people focus on on Shazam. So I'm just like, yes, yes, whatever we can get. And yeah, because you know. they yeah. kind of yeah they kind of play with that every couple of years. Because remember what was that in the mid 2000s, Lil, when they kind of did that with Mary Marvel, like they corrupted. Yeah. It. Yeah. yeah. Well, and then again, it was it was Black Adam giving her her powers. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but then again, and that again was a point where Black Adam seemed almost like a decent guy. And I actually, I think more than the corruption of Shazam is the redemption of Black Adam arc, where they kind of, I mean, not for nothing, even though he's like, the artistic design is so similar, I think it's like trying to make him into DC's name one. Where it's like, he's a bad guy, but he's not a bad guy. You know? Yeah. Unlike Nightmare, who is a bad guy, who is a bad guy. To understand that, scroll down to our Kibble Smith interview on Super Connected. That's right, last week's interview. Yay, shameless plugs, my favorite thing. Dan- Daniel Kibble Smith, writer of Loki and also writer for uh, The Late Show, Stephen Colbert. Yeah. And also the uh, Lockjaw series, which I love. They didn't even realize. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Lil, you know what else he wrote? What? Which I don't think we like too much, but uh, the Black Panther vs. Deadpool. It was obvious cash grab, but you know they did what they could with it. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you just get handed lemons, and you literally do have to make lemonade. So, fair <laughs> enough. It did his best. Oh, hey, Lilith, are you still reading Lois Lane? Yes, we're on issue five. It's probably the best book you're not reading. I, I'm enjoying it. I I really like this take on Lois. I just you know I would prefer her marriage and her son you know be in the main book, but you know wow. I, I I can't. Beggars can't be choosers. At least she's not dead. Well, was that next week that uh, Ben, this is pulling that, you know, Superman's going to reveal to the world he's Clark Kent? Yes. Because, you know, because, you know, the Superman was cited making out with Lois Lane. So is he going to be like, see, my wife's not cheating on me. I'm not being cuckolded. <laughs> uh. <laughs> okay, hold on. Well, see what they... oh. Bend this, bend this, bend this. No, I mean, you know, well, Secret Identity, first off, for a guy who doesn't really protect his secret identity that much, it's a little, honestly, it's kind of, honestly, not for nothing, I think the minute that someone says, hey, Lois Lane is making out with Superman, isn't she, like, with Clark Kent? Wait a minute, Superman, Clark Kent? I think maybe he's just trying to get out ahead of it. It's like the minute that someone sees, oh, Lois Lane, Clark, and Superman, they're a couple. And Clark Kent and Lois Lane are a couple, and then maybe like, oh, this ain't this ain't a Cyclops Wolverine thing. This is a uh, no thruple on the other side of the moon. There's just role playing. <laughs> but I mean, I do like, like I said, yeah, like you were saying, Lois Lane's good. I mean, we got Renee Montoya question in here. I mean, they're actually dealing with some real world events because she's still tracking down, you know the whole thing with kids in cages and stuff and which it, it has a really effed up ending <laughs> in real life turns out yeah. we're deporting the parents and adopting the kids like oh, oh so, so messed up. <laughs> yeah that is rip- <sighs> but the but the lois lane series is good yes yes it is all right i will i know you're not reading this uh batman 82 should i be like it's much Batman. I'm over it. it. This, this, I mean, Tom King's wrapping up in like what three issues? I think. I mean, this issue was weird because it's like you know, Batman and Catwoman come in. Like Catwoman's like kicking the crap out of Bane because you know, Bane's like, oh, we're gonna have a fair fight. Batman's like, yeah. Then Catwoman comes in. He's like, we're like, yeah, we lied. And so, Batwoman, our Catwoman's kicking the crap out of Bane. Batman is about to uh, break Bane's back. You know, turn about his fair play and. uh <laughs> Then, of course, Flash, you know, Thomas Wayne, Flashpoint Batman comes in, shoots Bane and Bruce. Whoa. That's how the issue ends. Why is he shooting Bruce? Because Bruce betrayed him! Bruce is weak! Wow. <laughs> yeah, okay. A little flake. He's not wrong. Yeah, this is... 
Batman 82? Like, take, is this, like, taking place in the far-flung year of 1982? No, Batman issue 82. Oh, issue 82. Okay. Oh, there's, like, what weird, like... Charlie yeah, was so lost for a second. Oh, well, that's, like, like a... Like, okay, there's Batman 66, there's Wonder Woman 77, I'm not familiar with what well, happened in 82 with the Batman. Well, that's, like, yeah. a... I saw an article last night. It says, oh, Wonder Woman 84 canceled. And then, like, if you click on the link, they're talking about, like, the, the Wonder Woman issue, 80, uh, you know, upcoming. Quick issue. Day! Yeah, exactly. They knew what they were doing. I know. Because there was, like, there was. It was just... like, they're putting all their hopes on Wonder Woman, homie. I'm sorry. <laughs> they're like, yeah, Joker's great, but um, we need some kid-friendly stuff, too. I mean, that whole universe, they want to reboot, but they're like, well, Wonder Woman's still part of this, Aquaman's still She part. was the first, damn it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which technically makes sense. Uh, the, you know, the big problem was they went with an old Batman for some reason. Well, yeah, well, now they're going the opposite direction. they thought Ben Affleck was going to be the Robert Downey Jr., and a lot of people said no. I mean, yes, he has alcohol substance problems and things like that. Well, but Robert Downey Jr. didn't have that by the time they started doing films with Exactly that. my point. Exactly. You know? You're so close. You got to get him after rehab. So exactly. Close. Well, the third rehab. Let's be honest. Well, he's got about three more in him, but, you exactly. know, whatever. Ooh. Hey, man. Uh, I know uh, things. I know people. No, I, I, no one I, does that. I hear things. Okay. Uh, uh, well, to, to Bojack's point, it is a predatory system where they kind of depend on you to relapse. Just saying. I'm just saying that whole system needs to be over. Well, only, only for the paid rehab. You can actually, you can actually just stop drinking on your own with the help and support of friends and family if you like want to do that. Okay, if you say so. Yeah, it's harder. You just have to actually, you know, freaking. And not pay someone to, to tell you you're a good boy. Um, that's America. That's the American way at this point. Now we just want pats on the back, even if we have to pay for it. Tiny. Oh, you know what? I I, got, I just want to say this. I just saw an episode of Leave It to Beaver, where um, Wally makes the point that everyone got an honorable mention because his parents were so proud to get an honorable mention, and he said, "No, everyone got an honorable mention." Be in trouble. Um, <laughs> So basically, participation trophies go back to the fifties. So. I was just about to say, yeah, but like okay. it's well, funny because we didn't have like it's weird where I grew up. We actually didn't have that, so I'm just like I, I don't know these participation either. Yeah, either you were good enough or you weren't. <laughs> I, I, I don't know yeah. what to tell you. We crushed the week just like Batman's father. You know what? Here's what I always say about participation trophies: you can't actually have a game unless someone plays. Unless someone it's wins. no fair if it's always a tie. That's like uh, unless yeah. you're playing soccer. But it's not a tie because there's a first place trophy, there's a second place trophy, there's a third place trophy, and then okay, everyone else, you know what? Thanks for showing up. We really, we actually, we actually do appreciate that you showed up every day. Here you go. You know, it's it's basically the ch- childhood equivalent of a paycheck. You know, yes. when you get a paycheck, it's not because you did a great job; it's because you showed up. And you did a job. You get a bonus if you did a great job. But if you just did a job, here's the barest minimum we can give you that we agreed to. Char- Charlie, as fathers, I think you'll agree. You know, I think the participa- participation trophy started as, hey, that kid over there is crying because he lost. Let's give him something shiny. No, it's called an I- orange slice and shut the hell up. No. <laughs> it, it, it's called- what? No, it is a cold- what kind of kids are we raising? Hey, listen, you... Listen, you bourgeoisie capitalist. Oh! <laughs> I just want to say, the reality is, yes. if you don't support the line, you don't support the industry. The industry is built not on the executive or even the, the employee of the month. It's built on every single person wiping up the vomit in aisle three that makes this operation work. And if you're going to say, oh, you're the guy who wiped up the vomit in aisle, aisle, aisle three, you are not worth our recognition. It's like, you know what? Then he's going to stop mopping up vomit in aisle three, and our 
aisles are going to be full with vomit before the end of the day. Listen, listen. I'm an HR manager. I get it. I get it. I know. But seriously, if the kid's crying, give him an orange slice and tell him to shut the hell up and keep it moving. <laughs> Tapping these little kids up, bro. Yes. <laughs> Well, no, well, uh, or if you're in South Park, or maybe we just have to baby everybody, lest they all become Mexican jokers. I don't know. I don't know. I'm willing to take the chance. Maybe you're not. I'm willing to take the chance. Mexican joker. Yeah, why South Park? Man, <laughs> what? season was good so far. Oh, oh, oh I'm sorry. well, I guess they're making a joke about this game is fun. So. You gotta. It's the first episode of the new season. Just watch it. Just watch it. Even if you're not uh-huh. a South Park fan. I, Thought it was good. I'm sure it's very good. South Park does really great comedy. I'm not going to deny that. South Park is really cutting edge. But, you know, it's like, it's a very big universe. So it's a lot to deal, to take in, you know. I don't know. It's like, I'm still stuck on Big Gay L's Big Gay Animal Farm. That's, <laughs> oh, wow. I'm old school, man. I can't jump wow. in. Wow. Uh, like, you know, you got you to gotta know... You know, and you know, I, I uh, like, you know, nothing. I mean, I like South Park as much as anybody, although sometimes it gets a little like, you know, someone should be arrested. Like, you know, Cartman should be in jail by now. Screw you guys and give me it. Oh, it's like, at a certain point, you know, when he had people's parents killed, it's like, you know what? Everybody I know Brady is not the, not the, top law enforcement person in the world and <laughs> if he's even in charge of law enforcement there even, anymore. Even Chef had to get out saying, even Chef had to get out eventually. Give it up on South Park. I get it. You can skip late seasons fourteen all the way to I'd say probably seventeen. Start at eighteen and and work your way down. There are only like ten episodes after ten, after season eighteen or, or something like that. So oh, really? it's not that big of an investment anymore. I've been trying to catch some recently, you know, lately on Comedy Central, but yeah, they're only doing ten seasons, ten episode seasons now. Yep. Okay. Well, just, just a thought. I, I just wanted to throw that out there. I, I appreciate Matt and Trey still. That, I just wish they would make a new movie. That's all. That I'm seems thinking. to be like the new like streaming platform. Uh, that's how HBO. That's how HBO Max definitely got me. I was like Rick Morty and South Park are gonna be. Oh, I don't have to like do no janky websites finally. Okay. Although no more Chinese fair, boxes, love. To be fair, is I guess from my point of view is I'd rather Matt and Trey do something new. Ooh. <laughs> no, like I said, I wish they would make a new movie, whether it be in the vein of basketball or Gasmo. Oh well, yeah, okay. That's, that's what I'm saying. It's like I prefer basketball. Oh, basketball. Uh, yes. I love basketball. Don't mm-hmm. ever badmouth basketball. Um. That is. Your mother's Look, the moment is really great too. Um, I, I like whatever they try. Like I'm willing to support them, and I, I like I, I love how they were just like you know tongue in cheek cancel South Park so we can do something new. <laughs> Fans yeah. like no. Well, exactly, and then it is where your bread is buttered on. And to it's them, like the Simpsons. to them, it's like, look, this is our paycheck. This is this is our participation trophy, and we're gonna keep on participating. And so someone Tommy Central says no. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You know. So yeah, that's you know that's their participation. That's all. So what was the best Marvel book you boys read? Uh oh. Do you is it? I'll tell you what my. I was my gonna say Marvel. Doctor Doom number two, but. Oh, that was a good one. That was a good one, and I did read it. Doctor Doom number two. I did. And I did it. enjoy yeah. Pro- Prodigal Son. Surprisingly. Oh, Prodigal Son came out? Oh, man, I missed that one. Are you behind? What? Which Prodigal? Who was he fighting with in this Prodigal Son? Lola. There's another Prodigal Son? I'm sorry. Well, no, there was a Fantastic Four. There was a Guardians of the Galaxy. Was there a yeah. one for Surfer? I mean, those were out a while ago. Yeah, oh, this, this one was... is, yeah, for Fantastic Four. Yeah. Oh. oh, that's the first one. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Yes. Sorry, that was Two months ago, Lola. Um, <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, it's okay. It's day. fine. I love that book. Um, I, you know, I love, I love when he makes the point that does anyone have a what? What is the thing with invisible barriers on this? <laughs> Which is just like, I love the idea of of an omnipotent being just constantly being 
running into walls. It's just, it's just brilliant. But, but um, wait, wait, Lil, can you turn your camera on for a second? I want to see your jaw hit the floor when Charlie Esser names his uh, book of the, his uh, pick of the week. No, just, just tell me. Oh yeah, yeah. Go ahead and say, I'll, I'll say, I, and I read all my books this week. And, and I said, read this, and he, they, yeah. and he's like, this oh. one I think is my pick of the week. Yeah. Say it. It's something Charlie Etzer would enjoy. It's Black Cat number whatever it was. <sighs> number six. Boom! <laughs> wow. And, but why is it, Philip? Why is it my pick of the week? Uh, is it the uh, is it the conversation during the date she has with Yes! Rock the Leaper. That's Rock the Leaper. And, and honestly, that is like, oh my gosh, this is a ship that must sail. I read that. I'm like, this is something Charlie Esther would like. It is something <laughs> Charlie Esther Charlie would like. Let me just put it to you that way. <laughs> By the way, just a real weird side question. Is Black Fox um, Felicia Hardy's father? No. Um, I, I think this is a retcon for this series, but I guess they're saying, like, he must have worked, and I don't know if he, like, maybe trained, like, okay. Black well, Cat's they, father. They, 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 oh, oh, okay, okay. And then it was, like, training her, too. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, so... Yeah, because I knew, like, I knew that, because I never really knew who Felicia, sort of like Loki's mom, I don't know who Felicia Hardy's father is, and so... Well, I don't think he's ever been in the comics, but she's mentioned that he was a thief, and then he died. died. Yeah, so, yeah, I think they've retconned it okay. where the Black Fox and her father were friends, and he was helping okay. her, yeah. So he's sort of a father figure to her. Yes, yes. Okay, so that's cool. Um, But, no, and you get this, and I love the, just the where you're seeing everything where you have the overlay of the conversation between Batrock and Black Cat. I love that Batrock gives her a blender. <laughs> oh, yeah, steals her a blender. Because it's like, I don't know, man. This is, this is a random theft. It's like, have a blender. Like, what, you don't eat, you don't drink smoothies? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, and honestly, the brilliance of it is like, look, this is just, we're just, we're just, you know, we're just having fun around here. You know, you stole the goblet, and that's great. You know, it's like, okay. <laughs> Cause, and again, not for nothing, he's not a thief. He's a merc. You know, <laughs> it's a completely different line of work. Similar subsets and skills, but it's what he does, you know? And I love the fact that they absolutely have, like, great chemistry. They certainly, you know, have their evening of playing Jeopardy together and then move on. Hit the buzzer. You know, well, well, you know, you watch Jeopardy. This is what me and my wife do. Is we watch hey, rubber feet. There you go. Um, and that's what that's what couples do together. Uh, <laughs> uh yeah, and but in, and then in the background you have Black Fox apparently being chased by hand ninjas. And him basically beating them up, which I love because it kind of suggests the idea that, um, you know, that basically there are tears to hand ninjas. But, I, I mean, I, I may, unless maybe Black Fox is just that good. He's, but, he, he's always trying to rip off the wrong person. Like, cause like even in his first appearance, like he had the red ghost and his super apes after him. Spider-Man had to save him from them. Then in the nineties, he like ripped off, he ripped off this like big expensive emerald, which turned out to be like, it was, it, you know, it was doom's, it was doom's mother. So like Spider-Man had to like fight doom. The Like, so he wouldn't kill black Fox. Wait, the emerald was doom's mom. No, well, it, it, no, it was owned by his mom. So he was like, Oh, you dare touch, you know, this emerald. This that was mom owned a gigantic emerald. Why are they freaking poor gypsies? I don't know. I don't know. Comic books don't always make sense. It's a gi- it's a giant retcon emerald, Charlie Asser. Come on. <laughs> it's the emerald of the Wait, are emeralds worth a lot of money? It was huge. Yes, emeralds are worth a huge amount. Emeralds are actually rarer than diamonds. I mean, the thing was like the size of someone's head. That's how big it was. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's a comic book emerald, you know. So- Honestly, Spider-Man like, 349 and 350, Lil. We'll have, we'll have to cover it one day. It, that's, that's not ringing a bell at all. Yeah. To be fair, as as Mo Men will tell you, it's like, no, these are like like these are like sand. Like, you know, you go like literally like a hundred yards down, you get like caverns of diamonds. So, you know, it's 
the Earth in the Marvel Universe is very oddly designed. And if not for the fact that it was riddled with monsters, you know, it's weird that, like, Roxxon is trying to get all this oil because, honestly, that's, like, the only thing they can get at that isn't being guarded by monsters. Like, every other natural resource in the Earth's crust is just... You're going to have to fight a gigantic monster, just so you know. And you're probably going to awaken it, and it's going to bring the Fantastic Four, and that's going to cause problems for you. So they basically decided gigantic gemstones are not worth their time. Also, you have the obvious fact that if you start bringing gigantic gemstones out of the Earth, that's going to devalue the gemstones. So gemstones are only valuable because they are rare, and the second you realize that, oh, no, we can bring out, like, uh, a diamond as big as the, as the Rit out of the Earth, suddenly you can't uh, have Scott Fitzgerald reference. The second you find out that there are diamonds as big as the Rit, you can't really sell diamonds anymore. So. Well, That's you right, shouldn't people. be selling diamonds any, anyway. You're That's right, worthless. people. You know, my, you know how much Molloy blood is on those diamonds? Yeah, you know. Well... Not if not if you're not if you're the mole man because he he had just asked the mole to bring him the diamonds they bring him because you know like, here you go here's a diamond you know but speaking of Doctor Doom number two uh, Lilith what do you think of it uh, uh, it's not what I was really expecting but I, I like it did you read number one no oh okay okay here's what I got to say about this the most mind-numbingly fascinating aspect of this is the interplay with Morgan Le Fay. Yes. Because if you're reading Excalibur, which I did, Morgan Le Fay is like, oh, I am the lord of Camelot, and da 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 and am I evil, am I not? I don't know, but you're gonna find out! And here she's like, no, I got a place in Queens. You know, it's nice to chill at. Yeah, but is that, I mean, are we getting like two different, ver- er, you know, is there alternate version of Morgan running around, or? I mean, it could be alternate timelines. I that mean, honestly, doesn't... this is this is so, clearly not in general Marvel continuity. But it's like a political mystery. Am, am I reading this right? It's like, I don't know. I do miss a head of state. Yeah. Well, the idea is, so, okay, to catch Lilith up, so a bunch of terrorists blew up a big base on the moon that was supposed to solve global warming for reasons. The black hole. They put a black hole. Honestly, if he, like, this is like the worst science comic you're ever going to see. Because, like, if you know, I, I don't know science that good. I like to think I do. I'm like a dabbler. No, literally, I'm a dabbler in science. It's a petty but dabbler in science. I'm a petty dabbler in science. And as soon as you start looking at this, it, like, I don't think black holes work like that. Um, how any of this works, Charlie. It's fine. Exactly. But, like, apparently a bunch of less varying terrorists blew up the moon. Or not the moon, but the moon base that had the black hole on it. Killed a bunch of people. Because Dr. Doom said, oh, you can't put a black hole on the moon. That's a stupid idea. Or It'll fail. Doom. Although, to be fair, it's one of these things where it's like, like they actually asked Doom to help, and Doom was like, no! You should have come to... I can only do it myself. I could be the genius who solved it. And he had this other side plotline where, like, Kang and Doom were kind of stuck in a, a time loop together. So... And he's seen, he's seen flashes I definitely have to go find issue one now. And he's yeah. seen flashes of this alternate timeline where he has, like, a he's married and has kids and his face is fine, and yeah, well, always you know. that vanity. Always well, his vanity. No, well, he makes the point, I know that Doom, and that Doom is weak. And he's probably talking about the Doom that never got his face messed up. Yeah, probably. You know, because there's a universe in which his face never got... Because there is a universe in which his face literally didn't get messed up, where where he said to Reed, what do you mean my math is wrong? And he says, no, 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 see, just press three of the two. Oh, shoot, the chick. <laughs> the two! The two! My greatest nemesis! And then they, like, became best friends, and it's like, oh, yeah, let's just make the world better, you and me, dude. So, Rick and Morty Zing. for Rick and Morty. Okay. No, <laughs> Leonard and Sheldon. Bazinga. 
And you know, hashtag don't miss that show. <laughs> well, you know, honestly, it's it's sort of it's sort of it's sort of superior party man all over again. I was like, oh, being nice can't be good because I wasn't nice, and now I can't admit that being nice was good. It's like, dude, just oh my lord, bro is a person. It's okay. Lilith, let Charlie Lilith. have this. Let him complain about it. I Lilith, feel his pain. Lilith, listening audience, we're gonna get six months of what did they do to Superior Spider Man? Which I don't blame him. He he a little like one last week. Now he knows our pain with the marriage. Mephisto yeah. magically wipes stuff away. I never, I, first of all, I've never supported that. Uncle Ben. So, yeah, I know, Uncle but this ben. is closer to your heart. <laughs> well, yeah, this is closer to my heart because actually, you know, I'm just scared about this. <laughs> I do care about Peter and and Mary Jane. What's your face? <laughs> Peter's a menace. It's fine. We get it. Well, he's a menace to himself and others. You know, that, that's the thing about Peter. You're a menace to yourself and other others. You know, it's it's not even just that he's a menace to others. It's that he's a menace to himself. He's just like you got to sort of like grow up a bit. Uh, that, did anybody see that Spider-Man and Venom double trouble? I'm like, what? the damn hell is that like one of the all ages books or something because just like i don't know if it was just like the covers but it, the, some of the it art looks, books, yeah it's like yeah so i don't know if it's like that's like one of their all ages things or something yeah i guess i guess the whole thing is peter and eddie brock's switch bodies or something yeah yeah this is like really weird yeah i've seen the solicits but i really haven't seen much else about and like I said, the covers, just the art, makes it look like it's one of those all ages things. It, yeah, it was it was fun if you don't care about the characterization. Oh, of you the read characters. it. So it's like a lot of humor, seriously. Okay. Uh, so is it is it is it in continuity or? No, definitely no. not. Okay. It, it's it's not even yeah I guess it's in all ages because it was just like this is not Venom but cool. <laughs> Who's the Venom? Is it Eddie Brock? Yeah. Oh, okay. The least interesting of all the Venom. Well, uh, yeah, no, really, yeah. Who was that last guy, that league? Uh, that, come on. Matt Garrigan? He's was about it. Yeah, the yeah, the last one's come about on. as interesting as Hob Gobble Gobble. <laughs> so Matt Garrigan was an actual interest. First off, Matt Garrigan is an interesting character because he's kind of, he's kind of, again, Miles and Miles, a man Marco type, a man out in Marco type, where it's like he never really, like he participated in the experiments, but never really, cons- he never really understood what all of this meant. He kind of like completely derailed his entire life to be in this world. And it's not to say he was a good guy. And actually, Matt Garrigan, who was just, who was actually a PI, he wasn't even a, like a professional criminal. Yeah. He's- Private investigator. Oh, oh, Mr. Jameson, you'll give me fifty dollars and a Twinkie and some superpowers. I'm in. Exactly. It's like, you know, and then he's like just in the light, you know. And it's like, and not for nothing, isn't that the tale of so many gangsters? It's like, you know, hey, hey, kid, carry this bag, uh, carry this paper bag over to that guy. Give that to him. Okay. Yeah, now you're in the life. Ticking? Why Sorry. is it ticking? <laughs> exactly, you know? Now you're in the life. And so I have this weird thing with Matt Garrigan where it's like, yeah, or Matt Gargan, sorry. Um, <laughs> I always put extra vowels in these people's names. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, Matt Gargan. And, and it's like, yeah, he never asked for this, per se. He didn't say no, but he didn't ask for it. And now he's now he's freaking the scorpion and he had a venom. And to me, that's more interesting than Eddie Brock. I like to lift weights and I don't like Peter Parker. Um, it's like, it, to me, Eddie Brock's kind of like, eh, okay, I guess this is where we're at and we're just going to do this. And it's kind of, to me, Eddie Brock always feels like a placeholder for the next more interesting take on that. Well, supposedly, I heard that, like, like back, at, you know, when they first created Venom, they were talking about doing, like, a female, having it be a female, and then they're like, oh, no, no, we can't have Spider-Man punching a girl, so they, that's when they came yeah, up. Yeah, it was Brock. supposed to be, it was supposed to be Eddie Brock's wife, so it was supposed to be this person who had this anger at 
Spider Man for ruining Eddie Brock's life, basically ruining. Oh no, life. that's that's not even what I heard. I heard oh, it, it's okay. gonna be a woman who like you know she's on her way to the hospital in a cab. She's about to give birth, but you know it gets caught in a Spider Man fight and miscarries or something. And oh okay, yeah, yeah. So well, that's, that's definitely a 2019 spicy storyline we can get behind now. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. Back in the eighties, maybe not so much, but now that's definitely a spicy storyline. Sometimes stories come too soon, and that's why Eddie Brock winds up as Venom. You know, it's like if he did, if he said, "Oh, what if there was like this alien symbiote that bonded with someone who hated Spider Man?" Then you might go, "Oh, well, it's right. That's entirely interesting story." But you know, the eighties, let's just have some, let's have some weightlifter, not like, let's have some jock, not like Peter Parker. Because he's friends with Flash Let's, let's have let's have a Flash stand in. We can't get Flash and Venom. Eddie, Eddie, Eddie Brock is just oh, how dare you point out that I'm bad at I was bad at my job, Spider Man. Yeah, which is like the height of privilege too. So it's like Oh, white reporter privilege. Exactly. It's like nothing about Eddie Brock works in our current era. <laughs> it's like he's even like, oh, I had cancer and then I not, don't have cancer. It's like, well, isn't that convenient for you? You punched, you, holes, know, you punched holes in my fake news, Spider-Man. Yeah, it's like, at least Captain Marvel... Yeah, he would have got a job on Fox right. News and would have been fine. Oh, 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 there's your what if. <laughs> yeah, that's my... Honestly, oh, <gasps> that is your next story. You need to get Eddie Brock working with uh, J. Jordan Jameson on the Fact Channel. Yes. <laughs> on Facts and Friends. <laughs> facts and Friends. <laughs> Well, it's called the fact channel. That, that's that's how they that's how they code it. It's called the fact channel. Yes, I know. That's why I said facts and friends because it's facts and friends. Oh, I see. You gotta give any. I, 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 I have to case. Well, I won't say who, but there's somebody that's grandma never turns. Like every time I'm over their house, that channel is on. So that's how I know. Charlo. Yeah. Well, it is the broadcast, so you know that's the thing about Fox and friends. It's uh, it's. If you, there's a Channel 5 in your neighborhood, it, it's usually Fox. What? What? You think only old people watch that, Lilith? Every, just because every commercial was for, for like, you know... Uh, Hip replacement here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Or, yeah. or, like, those old people don't that... turn the channel home because they forgot where the yeah. remote was. No, 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 no. Okay. And, and let me just tell you this. As a, as, a, as a watcher of broadcast TV, pretty much all of it is for incontinence products. So... <laughs> Or or who? To be fair, Amazon employees use that now too. Okay, <laughs> to be fair, it'll help you. But it's not incontinence; it's just you know efficiency. Uh, it'll help you poop. Oh, speaking of help you poop, did you eat Green Lantern Black Stars number one? <laughs> Unfortunately, I was like, okay, how did this? I'm here for it. Him being an incompetent Jack Jack Bottom, I'm totally here for. It, but. But why do we need a three issue miniseries? I mean, they kind of like they put the Green Lantern book on hiatus, and then they did this three they issue. Give us this, I know. I'm just like, and, give me Kyle with the White Lanterns and and the Metal Men, please. Like, can we go back to that then? <sighs> this ain't it. This ain't. This is not it. It it it, it, it it's it's Grant Morrison on his drugs. You know, it's just like <laughs> I, I did enjoy the artwork, but um, yeah, it did feel a little psychedelic as well. <laughs> So, like, if I had a black light, it was totally going to light up. <laughs> That's when you hit the smoke the doobie button, So <laughs> Smoke the doobie. Yeah, I, I don't know what mess this is, but I, I am not interested in this Green Lantern mythology. Just bring back my regular book. Can we get a council of Green Lanterns? Can we just have all our human Green Lanterns or something? Wouldn't it be smarter to just have a council of lanterns where you actually invite the red lanterns and the black lanterns and everyone has a vote and we're gonna say, look, let's have our let's have our Game of Thrones of let's have a game of lanterns. Um DC, how have you not figured this out yet? Game of lanterns. I mean I mean, is great is Grant Morrison just like a one trick pony now, Lilith? Is it just like, oh, how much you know, let me do some drugs. What kind of sick, twisted crap can I throw at people this time? Yeah, yeah. I definitely think that the Green Lanterns needed a refresh and a reboot because I don't think anybody cares about Green Lanterns anymore. Well, you think they're going to reboot them again once this uh, once HBO Max this doesn't work out, once this doesn't sell? Yeah. 
Well, they already are making a Green Lantern. They've already said that we're doing a new Green Lantern. Well, no, that's anthology. The way that I'm seeing that is that it's an anthology kind of based in the old Green Lantern stuff, but it needs a refresh so that it's, like, more streamlined for newcomers. I just feel like Green Lantern mythology is not that... It's just not that deal for I, a lot of people. That that I think that's the big thing. I don't think the Grant Morrison stuff is very new. It's really not accessible like, at all. Because I think no. it said they're like, oh, you got to be like a big fan of like what is it like sixties or seventies Green Lantern stuff. Would it make the least sense? Yeah, yeah. As a person that is like Silver Age, Golden Age, I have to say that is the time that Green Lanterns made the least sense. You know, you know the stuff before hard traveling heroes. Exactly. I'm just gonna toss this out there. You want to do a Green Lantern story, right? Start with, what's his name? Alan Scott. You know, start with, hey, here's a random thing I found that suddenly has all this magical power. And then unearth an entire mystery and legend and story from there. You know, that's the problem with the Silver Age Green Lantern. It's, it's like, okay, here's a fully formed omniverse that we now have to sort of cram into. And it works for comic books, but it not always best for any kind of narrative story that's not a comic book because people want an ongoing legend story that isn't all just as luck would have it, here are the gods of the universe bestowing gifts upon you. You know? So, yeah, start with Alan Scott and then grow from there. That's my advice to DC. And now that he's gay, it's perfect for this narrative that they like in, in 19, 2020. Well, I don't think he... Well, no, that was like that new 52 crap. Like I That think, actually stuck, though, is what I heard. That is actually... Yeah, funny. it's supposed to be two versions of the JSA because they kind of... I mean, I think Doomsday Clock is supposed to bring them back, but they kind of like snuck in that like classic uh, JSA version in like Justice League now, so... Who's to say that that classic version? I mean, have you seen that outfit, honey? Just saying. <laughs> True. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It is. Well, first of all, plus it was more yeah. of a well kept secret back then because it had to be because you could be phone in jail. I just well, didn't you know. It's I just didn't like it. Hangman it's just... and uh, Captain Metropolis. You know, they're just they're just confirmed bachelors hanging out, having they're fun, good friends, having having dinner at a restaurant randomly after everyone thinks they're dead. Or can't. if you're a woman, you know, you get a boss. What is it, a bossy man? Or you're just gals being pals. Can't find a wife. Just like that. that or uh, whatever her name was. The uh, lady, yeah. Anyway. Alan Moore's got his shoes. Um, <laughs> Poor Alan Moore. <laughs> I'm just saying that, well, not really. Everyone in the 90s had a lot of issues in comic books. Back in the 90s, he was a very famous comic book writer. <laughs> well, he's still a very famous comic book writer. The man, you know, the man, the man's a Shatner. He can make his whole living just going to conventions, finding old pieces of artwork. You know? You know, you know the sad thing is that I haven't seen Shatner at a con in literally a decade, though. Well, that's, he actually has been doing other things. He's actually been yeah. a working actor. You know? He got back into being a working actor, making fun of William Shatner. Which is a great gig if you can get it, you know? It's like, so, oh, we want someone to really overact this scene. So we want you to show, totally... If you, I'm sure people, like, directors tell them, we want you to totally shatter it up. It's like, I'm there, man. I'm... I, I got ex-wives and kids and motorcycle habits to support, so... You know? Yeah, like, okay, stop hiring Shatner so I can go back to seeing him con. Thank you. Yeah, you know... Um, yeah, I don't know how often you see Stilo anymore now that he's all on Facebook. Oh, wow. Actually, a lot. Oh, okay. Well, good for you. Well, you know, not for nothing, he's got to do that grand petty. Because oh, he, he does his business on the social. Line. So, you know, and that's how you tell the difference. But, you know, if you, if you have to shake hands with the hoi polloi, you do. If you don't, you don't. Yeah, press that flesh. Well, George McKay had, like, a musical on Broadway for, was it on Broadway for a while? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, oh, allegiance. It's about the, uh, yeah. Japanese American oh, yeah. camps. Yeah, and you know that's always in talks to be made into like you know a movie or something. Um, Does nobody that... invite Russell Crowe, and we're good. And they ruined heard... life is. Why and they ruined cat Russell Crowe to a film about Japanese Americans. <laughs> uh, Tom Cruise, Last Samurai. Ooh. <laughs> 
Tropic Thunder, <laughs> Robert Downey Jr. Um, I, yeah, that was, joke, Thunder, yeah, that, yeah. Well, that, that was the joke. Tropic that Thunder. Yeah, that was that was that was that was a that was a that was that was a that was a blazing saddle level. It joke. still counts. It, that it was counts. a point. It still counts. Well, but they had they had an African American actor in that as well. Who calls him out on it as well? So it's like you know, just because you're lampshaded, don't mean we can't talk about it. We can talk about it, but you know, the joke is within its own context. You know, you can't take. Here's what I'll say: you can't take a joke out of context if there's a context to the joke. White privilege. Moving on. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Like seriously, that then poor taste. Whatever. I, can we moving on? Can we cut this off? We still got a super connectivity to do. Oh, you still have a super connectivity to do? I thought Lilith was in a rush to get out of here, but now she's arguing, you know, Tropic Thunder. I was like, yeah, yeah. I gotta talk about Immortal Hulk of Savage Avenger. We could talk that on Daredevil. Uh, Marvel? Oh, I miss Daredevil. And of course, the final issue of Actual Roger. Oh, did find you... out. Does he stay actual? Yeah, and if you read Old Man Quill. Oh, uh, well. <gasps> hey, everybody I, I know said that's the worst book this book. week. What, Old Man Quill? Yeah. Number two, right? No, number 11. Never mind, then. What am I thinking of? Oh, Hellfire, are you actually... Do you go to comic book shops on Wednesdays, or do you go to... <laughs> no, she don't, Miss Digital. Millennial digital. No, I do go to. I have to go to my comic book shop because there's some things that I need to get. I get. I get the feeling that Lilith. Yeah, but I, I think she my book. For... My book may have been mixed up. There are some that sit around that I don't read necessarily. Hey, hey. Oh, hey kids, did you read this Prodigal Son Fantastic Four? <laughs> oh, you know what? It's because the trade came out. That's why. Oh. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. See, in my comic book shop, when you come in, they have like a little yellow hang tag. Says new this week. Yeah. No, no. I mean, it's just it's just books at this point, just everywhere. It's uh, it's a mess in here. Hey, did you know Spider Man has a clone? That I much I do know. Thank you, Philip. I know you do. I know you do. Are you gonna play the drop? You gonna play the drop? Oh, you want it? You no, want not it? really. I love Ben Riley. I aim to please. All Ooh. right. Let's get out of here. We got, like I said, we got crazy kids. On that note, all right. Send your thoughts. You heard a lot here tonight, so send your thoughts on any or all of it. Uh, Capes and Lunatics at gmail.com. Call the voicemail 614-382-2737. That's 614-38-CAPES. And you can find all our social media links, including uh, links to the YouTube. Uh, links to merchandise. That's right, kids. You even you can own a Capes and Lunatics uh, t-shirt. Mug, uh, phone case. Phone case, mug. Yeah, that's right. Just uh, one stop shopping. Uh, go check out Linktree. That's L I N K T R dot E E slash Capes and Lunatics. And check it all out, kids. All right. Lil Hellfire, where can people fight with you? Is it too late to rebrand this podcast as random nonsense? Is it? You decide, guys. Let me know. At Marvel at Lil Hellfire <laughs> or Instagram at Lil Hellfire69 for my cakes and lunatics and sidekicks peeps. <laughs> I lost my nipple for nothing. R.I.P. Gary. R.I.P. Charlie Esser. Charlie, I can't hear you. Hello. Did you mute, mute yourself, Charlie Esser? Oh, no. The first victim of Skype. Well, you can always find me live tweeting. <laughs> when there's things to live tweet. <laughs> or when I feel like it. When I darn well please. When I'm not shaving for job interviews, well... Charlie, you just want me to do your plugs and then after we hang up. Well, you can always find me live tweeting uh, this and that and all kinds of things at Super Connectivity blog. <laughs> oh, no. Nope, you messed up. 
I know. I you know. can write to him in that old-fashioned way. You can fashioned write to him way. in that old-fashioned email way, like your Ma's and Paws and your Victor Von Dooms did at Super Connected Blog. All uh, one word okay. at the gmail.com. And yes, for all the live tweeting and all that other good stuff, you can find him at Charlie Esser. That's C H A R L I E. E-S-S-C-R. Look for the two E's in the middle. For quality. Bing! There you go. And there you go. One the grow one. Oh, no. He can't do ampersand. Uh, we'll have to do it together, Philip. All right. For another week, we have been the Capes. Awesome. Oh, sad. Lunatic. I'm not sorry. They did the movie. Thanks, guys. So, from me, from Lil Hellfire, from the beat, Charlie Esser. We'll fix it. We'll fix it. Before the. <sighs> Skype was like, I'm tired. You guys have been talking for not over an hour and 25 minutes. We broke the Skype. Kardashian break the internet. We broke the Skype. Much beauty on that end. Enough said. <laughs>